Today we're talking about the beginner's guide to stockpiling and we're going to answer your stockpiling questions. So put them in the chat. Stockpiling is the only way to go if you are going to actually save money on your grocery bill, really. It's, it's what it boils down to. And I'm not talking a 25 year down in the basement bunker type stockpile. Even if you just have one cabinet or one little shelf of just one or two extra of each of your canned goods that you purchased on sale, eventually you will start getting to the point where you are always saving money on your grocery bill and you don't have to make an emergency run to the store every time you need an ingredient. And so, um, cause we have a lot of people that say, uh, what their, their husband got laid off and that little amount that they had, you know, stored up in their cabinet for a couple of weeks, helped tie them over and you, or somebody got sick and that helped tie them over. And so yeah. you have little things that happen like that, that it helps with. And hello, my daughter. How are oh. you? Well, <laughs> we won't mention your day. We love you anyway. Um, we, Ellie, we so. wore our colors in honor blueberry for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you do for beginner's guide to stockpiling? First of all, Please buy only food you oh like goodness. and eat. That will sa solve half of your problems <laughs> that you worry about on stockpiling. It really I, will. I cannot tell you the number of times people email me and say, I just threw away <laughs> X amount of whatever because it expired. You should have nothing expiring in your house mm -mm. because it's always things that you normally use and that you normally rotate and that you normally um, always have on hand. So you're not just running to the grocery store to get something. Um, Ellie is appreciating the blueberry fashion memorial. <laughs> <laughs> the blueberry is her, her car. car. But yeah, <laughs> we had a little incident today. So anyway, um, all right. And so, um, Please, only buy food that you eat. Now, I will tell you that I have stockpiled food that I didn't eat. <laughs> but here's my big but on that. I got the food for free. I had the storage space to put it. And so I just had it for a true apocalypse emergency type thing. Like... If we just really ran out of food, you would eat it. We would be able to yeah. eat it. So I will give that caveat that I had an aunt, an elderly aunt, who went to the food bank for one senior. I'm not exaggerating. One senior, they would give her a banana box. So let's see. So a banana box is like this big and this wide, like this oh, yeah. deep. They would give each senior. It was it three or four banana boxes each every week, Yeah, every yes. week. And her and her friends would all get this. And so for a while, and what happened was they couldn't pick what they wanted. They just said, here's your portion, take it or leave it. You couldn't pick what you ate. You couldn't leave some, take some. Here's your boxes. This is what you get. Take it or leave it. Well, so what happened was her and her friends were getting all this food. And Donnie was keeping <laughs> us fed. <laughs> and I mean, it was mountains it of was. food. Like I would literally get a carload of food every week. And I was sharing it with my neighbors. Well, and she we gave it so to much. grandma. She yeah. gave it to grandma. She gave it some to my folks first before she gave it to anybody else. Yeah. And... <laughs> So in that situation, if you have the space and you get it for free, go ahead and stockpile something that you wouldn't eat, but that you could survive on if you needed to, especially if you have no stockpile started at all, mm -hmm. then that'll help you get started. And so first of all, buy stuff that you eat. Secondly, buy it on sale. This yeah. does not have to be expensive at all. They had canned goods. Four for five dollars, which is the good stock up price now. It used to be five for five dollars, and now it's four for five dollars. But 
when they had the case lot sale, I went and stocked up on peaches the other day because mm -hmm. they were on sale and we eat a lot of them. Okay. The next thing, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'll the next in. thing is, um, do you want me poppy with mine? Not really. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I had my mind focused. I know, and then I interrupted um, you. Don't. Okay. Um, let's see. We were talking about the, oh my goodness. Aunt Today's Donnie. been one of these days. Aunt and, Donnie. And, and then bite on sale. Bite on sale. Okay. The next thing is you think of it as your own mini grocery store. This isn't like the zombie apocalypse and it's sitting on the shelf for 25 years. This is, we're using it all the time and rotating it all the time. And so I don't have foods. Well, I have a few foods that are 25 year foods in number 10, the coffee can size, but those are just for a true emergency, yeah, like tomato this. powder, pu powdered butter, um, and a couple, one or two other things. I can't remember, not hardly anything at all, but, um, it, this isn't something that you're stockpiling for 25 years and never using. You're using it all the time. And so, Think of it as your mini grocery store in your basement. So, okay, go ahead, Mother. What were you going to say? Well, I didn't know if you wanted me to show this here you or can. not. Because what I do is, when she was talking about buying stuff in the case, okay, what I do is I buy the stuff I eat. And if I eat a can of tuna that week, I keep a list right there handy with the pencil and everything. And as soon as I get the can out of my cabinet, I go over there and write on my grocery list, tuna. And anything else I use out of my pantry of my, you know, stuff that I'm saving, I write it on the list. Then I'll go to, the, I'll either watch, if it's something I know that'll come on sale once in a while, I'll watch for it to come on sale. And when it comes on sale, I'll go in and buy it and I'll replace it with the can I ate. And then sometimes I'll add one more can, maybe two, depending on what the price is. That keeps my my rotation going, but it also helps me to build up a little bit more. But what I do too is when I store it, it, it people make it so complicated and it doesn't need to be complicated to do this stuff. You gotta keep it simple. You know, I was thinking about this today. It seemed, I didn't ever hear preachers or anybody talking about this, but it feels like it, everything's so chaotic, so extreme, so complicated anymore that people can't understand to do anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is one of those areas you watch preppers and stuff and they make it, or even people that are cooking a recipe, they get 10 bowls out to do a recipe that I would just dump everything in a bowl and stir up. Oh, and dividing the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients and I, then mixing them both. And I'm like, it's, just dump in the dry ingredients, mix it, and then pour in your wet ingredients and you're good to go. But I think this is a way, you know, towards the end times, the Bible talks about Satan and evil is getting in and causing this stress and confusion in people. So keep it simple. Everything you do, try to keep it simple. So what I do, if you've gone seen my pantry, I don't know if I can pull, stick my pantry in. I showed a couple of weeks ago, we showed a video on what my pantry looked like on the inside. And I have just a closet and I have shelves. Well, I don't want to stack all these canned goods up really, really high. Because then when I get something new to unstack all of those and try to put the canned good behind is a pain. So what I do is I get these little boxes for free at Walmart or any grocery store. You can get them all the time and they love you taking them because then they don't have to trash them. And so I stack them too deep. I don't go any more than too deep usually. Once in a while I'll do three, but most of the time the heavier stuff I'll do too deep. And then all that I do is this is the newest or the oldest, I'm sorry, the oldest, and I keep that at the front. So then I will take and put the, when I get a new one, I'll just set it back here in the back. So instead of unloading all the canned goods, I will just lift this one box out, add to it and rearrange it how I need to, and then set it back in the cabinet. And so it's a simple way to do it and to keep a few of these boxes. So that's one thing that you can do real easy. And Tara was talking about buying in case. 
And if you have a large family, that's really good to do the case stuff. Now, what I do, because well, I... No, it's their case sale. You don't have to buy it by the case, but it's their case sale. A case yeah. sale. Yeah. Well, a lot of times they'll have buy 24 of these, yeah. you know, and it goes on sale. That doesn't work so much for me. It saves money. And if you're on really are doing this just to save money, that's fine. But I'm doing this for, uh, you know, to have longer term storage a little bit. So what I do is I only buy the individual cans when they go on sale because I'll buy like a can of tomato soup this week and then I wait for a week or two and I'll buy another can or two because the expiration dates are varied. See, when you buy it in a case, if you're single, all the expiration dates are all the same. So you've got to get those all eaten up by that one day, whereby buying the individual ones and spreading it out a little bit. But you see what I mean? for canned goods, you don't have to eat them right away. So no. even if you got all the same expiration dates, so these are 424 for the, when they expire. Well, this is pineapple. That's a bad example. But peaches. Okay. So let's say you have peaches. Canned goods will last 10 to 20 years they last past forever. the expiration date. Yeah. So even if you get the same date, don't think you have to eat them all or throw no. them away. No. Stop watching these cleaning and hoarding shows where they go in and they clean their closet and they throw out all the expired food. Oh, drives me nuts. Don't throw out the expired food. Use it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's been sterilized. All the germs have been heated and killed inside that can. Nothing can, I think people are afraid they're going to die of food poisoning. Yeah. And that's not what happens when it goes past the expiration date. The only thing that does, and that takes a couple of years even at that, is the um, the flavor might, might not be as intense. I've eaten stuff 10 years over the expiration date. We used to do that all the time. I mean, nobody yeah. thought about that and I couldn't tell any difference. So that's another thing of the spirit of fear and chaos and confusion. You've got to get past that, you know. Yeah. All right, guys, these videos are brought to you by our Dining on a Dime Cookbooks Volume 1 and Volume 2 on sale now, 25% off. Also, our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook is on sale. We have I miscounted the other day when I said we were sold out. Um, I, I don't know. How many do we have left, Mike? Like 15 or something left in stock, 25% off right now. They are on their way, though. Um, but if you order gluten-free and it goes out of stock, then your whole order will wait until gluten-free comes in if you put that in there. Oh, okay. So the man behind the curtain here says that. Go ahead, dear, and tell them what you just said. I said they've been flagged at customs. I just got a note, so they'll be slightly delayed. And I'm the man behind the curtain, so. Now they're delayed. Behind the curtain. Oh. Oh, and what a handsome man you are. Uh, Notice his mother in law did not comment. <laughs> Here, show, oh, she can't see it. Never mind. Um, so go check out our cookbooks right now, guys. 25% off. And we have our planners. 366 day, 400 page undated planners in stock right now to help you get organized. All right, next one, mom. I already went through all of them. Oh, no. that's your whole no. list? Okay. The other thing too is by, unless you have like a large family or like Tara has teenage boys, stuff like that, buy small cans when you can. I know a lot of people. They like going to Costco and uh, Sam's and these places and getting the huge yeah. cans of everything. But you'll have to think about this in some emergencies, not all, but some of them, if you lose the power and it's summertime and you there's three of you in your family and you open one of these big, huge, gigantic cans of peaches or green beans or whatever, and you eat one meal of them, what are you going to do with the rest of it? Eat green beans for four weeks. Even if you do that, you know, you can't, you have no place to keep it refrigerated. So by buying the mm -hmm. small cans, you may save pennies buying it in the big cans, but you, you're going to end up wasting most of it. So buy the small cans, even if you have to pay a few pennies more, because you will not be able to uh, have a way to store those maybe. And so it's better just to open a small can, everybody eat it at one meal, and then you don't have to worry about leftovers and storing them. Yep, so what she said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you guys have questions, please put them in the comments and we will answer them. 
Um, Rhonda says, what do you think about the powdered cream cheese? I have not tried it. What I should do is buy all these things. Here's my problem. I should buy all these things and actually taste test them for you guys and let you know if they're actually worth getting or not. But I hate to open something like that and then and just use it for a couple of times and then it's opened. I know it's just a psychological thing with me, but I need to just do it and test the foods to see if they're actually edible and worth eating. I do know the powdered cheese is worth it. That's really good. We get that yeah, all the time. That. And we actually use that all the time. If you have used the cream cheese, pop on there, you know, and let us know what you think of it. Yeah. If anybody's used it, let, let us know. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can send me questions, Mike, if we have any. Um, okay. Um, the next thing is, how do you store to keep bugs and stuff out? So I use diatomaceous earth. It's just powdered crushed up fossils is what it is. Yes, it's dead things. And um, the fossils, when they're crushed up and bugs walk across them, it um, scrapes their exoskeleton and they dehydrate is how bugs die. I mean, if you want the gory details. <laughs> you can also take it internally to kill pesticides. It works the same ways. If you have pesticide, pesticides, Parasites, not pesticides. <laughs> oh, guys, it's been a really long week. Um, if you have parasites, it is a pesticide to kill the parasite in your system also. So you can take food-grade diatomaceous earth, and they use it in countries where they have a lot of worms and those types of things. And so um, when you put that down, it keeps the bugs at bay. I do spray with chemicals. I know. Oh my goodness. Heaven forbid uh, the food is in cans and boxes. It's going to be okay guys. Really? So I do spray around the perimeter. We don't have mice really here at my house, but in Kansas we did. And so we just, you know, filled the holes as much as we could. I did have those Sonic mouse things. I think we might have those on our Amazon store. And you just plug them in the wall. And since I've been using those, we haven't had any mice. And I've so used, they seem to work for me. I've used but. those for over 25 years. And I didn't think they were working. And I moved yeah. from Wichita to Idaho and put them in. And I haven't had an exterminator. Even when I was in Kansas, I didn't have to have an exterminator. So I think they must be working. That's what I finally figured yeah. out. Because I never had a mouse or roaches or anything in Wichita. And I usually had yeah. everything. I was just laughing because I remember. So if I kept those on. Yeah. So I would advise getting those. Me, I don't want a mouse or a bug near me. So I just soak the whole house in anything. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I was just thinking of the earwigs when you did them that time in my log cabin. Remember when they crawled in the bed with me? Oh, my goodness. I do not like bugs at all. And when I lived in my log cabin, it was a concrete. Well, should I not tell the story? Go ahead. When I lived in my long cabin, uh, I had a concrete floor before I got my furniture and I just had a mattress on the floor and that's all I had. And I was leaning against the wall reading one night and I felt something on my leg. Well, let me backtrack. When I was about 10 or 11, I went, I lived in California and I went to get dog food out of a bag to feed my dog and I brought my hand out and there were earwigs. There are these little bugs with these little pincher things on the end of them just solid all over my hand. I just became hysterical. I had nightmares for ages with because of those silly bugs. Well, that night I was laying in bed reading before I went to sleep and I felt mm -hmm. something on my legs and I kept brushing them off and brushing my legs off, you know, and finally I pulled up the sheet and here were hundreds of these earwigs wicks crawling across my legs. It was horrible. I came apart at the seams and I ran over to Tar and Mike's. As a matter of fact, I did, wouldn't even sleep in the house that night. I went and spent the night with him, but I lifted up the mattress and solid under that mattress was earwigs everywhere. And I was laughing because the next day, Tara, I don't know what it was she got out, but she got out he, of her box, huge boxes of chemicals. And she, I told her, I said, you put everything you have in and around this house to we kill believe them. chemicals are our friends. <laughs> yes. I ain't gonna lie. Not Definitely. Chemicals are but, our friends. You know, even with bugs, if your house is relatively clean, and if you live someplace like Kansas or Texas or down south, a lot of you have exterminators. But like Tara said, the plug-ins, 
do. And that's the best mm -hmm. thing to use around your food because it really will keep a lot of the bugs out. And then one other thing on bugs that people get more often in food than anything is weevils. And you get weevils if you move into an older home and you get weevils if you don't put the flour you buy into your freezer every time you buy flour and let it freeze for 24 hours. That's all you have to do. Then you take it out of the freezer. I don't freeze my flour all, you know, long term. I just put it in there, let it kill. That kills the bugs. I put cornmeal in there too, because it will have weevils, eggs and stuff when you buy it at the grocery store. I know that's gross, but it's just everybody has them. And so they will come in. You can bring them into the cat cabinets that way. Or if it's an older house, they could be in the there. So what you do for that is it's kind of a pain, but you have to take everything out of the cabinets, take the Lysol. Is that right? I, the brown, brown in the, in the, the brown Lysol bottle. Lysol concentrate in the brown, in a brown bottle. bottle. And use the full-fledged concentrate, don't dilute it, on a rag and wipe down all the inside of the cabinets and you have to wipe off every can good. And that's what the exterminators, a couple of different ones, have told me to do to get rid of weevils in the house and that'll help with a bug problem in your food yeah okay sorry i'm shopping for remodeling parts while we're doing this <laughs> you want me to take over the show for you um patricia says hello friday is my big counter day we'll be going in the kitchen i start my stockpile up again good for you good. today yes is, well this week has been my counter day counter week and it has been a headache <laughs> Um, trying to figure out, I, we have this weird corner where the old ovens were that is longer than countertop depth. And so we had a major issue with that. And actually that's why we were late for the show because we had yet another issue with that. And it sounds like we might have another issue with them calling now. Uh, Mary says, stop piling, helped my husband through layoff, house paid off, food and house. We were comfortable. Very good. Yes, that's true. That's why we say we don't do this for the apocalypse or anything uh -huh. like that. This really helps just on an everyday basis because yeah. most everybody goes through something, you know. Yeah. Sarah, could you please tell me the best foods that have fiber? My doctor told my friend, I mean, just Google it. I mean, 10 high fiber foods, beans, broccoli, berries, avocados, popcorn, whole grains, apples, dried fruit. So there you and go. if you if you need mm -hmm. to save money a little bit, popcorn is really inexpensive and it's really good for a fiber thing. If you don't end up with dental bills. <laughs> yeah. Ask me how the dentist told me that that's one of the worst things you can eat. I would imagine. Yeah. Which I the... believe. Um, Debbie says I've stockpiled most of my adult life. It got us through my husband's six month layoff when he couldn't find a job. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kimberly, stockpile has saved us so many times. I rotate my stock, buying the few extra cans or items on the restock. Canned chicken salad for dinner. Ooh, yum. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah, that sounds good. I just said that too this Irma week. says, I really enjoy your channel. Your tips are so amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lori, found rice in my closet that expired in 2021. Yes, it's still good. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Right. Well, no, I take that back. If it's brown rice, it's probably not any good. Oh, brown rice. Brown rice only goes about six months after the expiration date because of the oils in it. So brown rice is a very, very very bad it's thing. It's one of the stockpile. rare things. Just, yeah. It's one of the few things you should not stockpile. Regular rice. rice. So regular rice forever. is fine. It's forever. Sarah, I like um, how you write the dates on the top of the can so you don't have to keep looking at the bottom. Yeah. So I, make it easy. For I yourself. also put it on the side. So yeah. if it's up higher on the shelf and I can't see the top of the can, then I can see it on the side too. So I write it both places. Yeah. You can send me the next one, Mike. Mostly because I. Tara doesn't do that on hers, I don't think, but I can't, don't have my glasses on when I go to get in the closet, so I could see it better when I write it. I go through my stockpile so fast that I don't even write anything. I mean, guys, I'm not kidding. Like, literally six times, seven times a day, we will go downstairs to my stockpile and get something. And um, so we... Uh, we just use it all the time. And mm -hmm. um, I just rotate it automatically because I'm just always using it. So like today, I went and got gluten-free flour. We got Lemex Taco Bell sauce. So uh, Janie, didn't realize how much we eat until I started stockpiling Love Volume 2. So guys, if you're wondering, Volume 2 right here, 25% off at livingonadime.com. They go together, Volume 1 and Volume 2. But Volume 2 is all the recipes that we just couldn't fit in Volume 1. 
If you need to start, start on volume one. It's 25% off now at livingonadime.com. She said, volume two arrived Tuesday. The section on creating casseroles is extremely helpful. Okay. You're welcome. God bless and thank you for YouTubing. You are welcome. Yes. So in volume two, we have a whole, a whole, um, I think it's two or three pages on how to make a casserole. So like we have the meats and then the add-ins and then the flavorings and you can mix and match and you can however just pick, you want. You know, like, do I have rice or do I want to use noodles? So you pick that do off I the list olives, and you pick chilies, what yep. meat or cheese, what kind of cheese. And mm -hmm. I listed those all out. And you know what? Speaking of casseroles, that's a good way to use a lot of your, um, you know, your pantry stuff, mm -hmm. your prepping stuff is to put it into a casserole, you know, use those things. Think of recipes. Like I buy a lot of tomato soup Be and what I do with my tomato soup, I eat it as tomato soup, you know, with a cheese, grilled cheese sandwich. But I also use that tomato soup to make tomato um, spaghetti sauce out of it. And I make chili out of my tomato soup. So my, I keep, I use that all the time and I keep it rotating. So think of ways, and she just said chicken salad. You know, I use mine for chicken salad, my canned uh, chicken. Think of ways and have a, recipes in mind that you can use those things in, you know, on a regular basis. Chris says, how long past the expiration date is instant pudding good for? Oh, quite a while. It's got sugar in it. So oh, I would yeah. say I, years. I would say five to ten years. At probably. least five, because yeah. I used some just the other day that was five years. Amy yes. says, I got your cookbook this week. Volume one, Dining on Dime. Absolutely love it. Recipes people will actually eat the best oh, cookbook ever. Thank you. you. She's now going to get volume two. <laughs> You. We get that. A lot of people say they're actually they're recipes. Actually, there's and, no stocky mushrooms in our Yeah, course, there's no. It's regular ingredients that you keep at home all the time. Carol Ann, the only foods I pay attention to the best buy dates are mayo and oil-based foods. Yes. Exactly. So any foods that have oil in them. So what would that be? Flours. Flour is kind of oily, believe it or not. So that will not last as long. It still lasts like 18 months. But um, any of your dressings that have oil in them. Um, Things that are made with flour, like crack, graham crackers, crackers. They last a long yeah. time, but they will go stale faster. Yeah, they will faster. eventually. Mm -hmm. so. uh, Gina says, how long pass, How long does tuna in patches, pouches last? Now, that's one thing that does not last. Yeah. Is tuna in pouches. I got some tuna in pouches, and I thought, oh, this will be great for long-term storage. Nope. It, oh my goodness. I broke that thing open. It was awful. I would not even buy, I wouldn't even buy it in the pouches just for regular use, let, for, let alone stockpile. Those pouches are so easy to puncture. And apparently mine had a little teensy tiny hole. And when I opened that thing, I, I literally threw up. It smelled so bad. It was awful. That's what you have to be careful of. The cans cannot be dented or bulging. Mm -hmm. And pouch stuff like that can get punctured yeah. if that doesn't happen they'll stay fine you know the cans and things will stay so think you know how puncture proof is whatever you're buying mm -hmm. <coughs> um and make sure you have a can opener yeah you know i keep i have about three can openers one in my car one in the kitchen and you know probably wouldn't even hurt to have one in the pantry Trish, have you tried Keystone meat? I don't know what that is. Mm -mm. Sorry. Don't know what that is. Kimberly, you can always vacuum seal with oxygen absorbers for the powders. Yes, you can after you open the number 10 cans. Yes, you can do that. And I have oxygen absorbers and I have a vacuum sealer and I could do that. Um, I just, I don't know. It's just a psychological thing for me. Barbara says the powdered cheese is great. Yeah. We use powdered cheese on popcorn. That's Jack's favorite thing. He gets four treats. Um, Mima12 says, my grandson saw a stockpile and told me I needed to donate my food. Saw her stockpile and told me to donate my food. What is with people donating food? <laughs> that actually kind of irritates me. I work hard to, to go and shop on sale so that I don't have to pay full price for stuff. And people are always like every stockpile video when I show my stockpile, everybody's like, well, you need to be donating some of that to the food bank. <laughs> oh my goodness, that just irritates me to no end when people do that. No, it's I'm like, not gonna donate it. It's like going in your house and saying you need to donate some of your furniture to 
the thrift store. <laughs> I actually use this food. I actually now, if you weren't using it, that's a it. totally different thing. But but I don't understand why people or it's say like that. you have money in the bank that you're saving. Do, yeah. do people come in and say, well, you should donate some of that money to I know, you know whatever. Yeah. 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 And I mean, well, I mean, and that was a kid. But um, well, I don't know. She doesn't say how old her grandson was. But, you know, still, Kim says I have a stock. My kids come and shop. Is what they do. <laughs> Can't, I have a stocked pantry, but I feel like I need to do extra because of my mother. Mother-in-law do not keep a stocked pantry and my adult children. Things shut down. I feel I need to help them. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. This is a really hard uh, so, situation. Yes, you need to help your family. But frankly, if your family is not stockpiling because they think you're being foolish for stockpiling and then something happens and they come to you wanting your food, uh, yeah. they need to work or do something to help you out with something. Yeah, the, Even would, the mother and mother-in-law. I mean, that's, that's I think, what makes the difference yeah. for you to decide is if they're, they can't do it for some reason. You know, they're physically yeah, unable. Yeah, they're not they physically. Financially, or, that's yeah. a totally different ball game. But if they all have money coming in just fine, it, it it's kind of like... Um, Although I guess Joseph did help his brothers and return their money. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. That's a tough one. It is. That's why we're hesitating. Because at the same time, though, anybody mm. else that came, Joseph... In, had them made work, them pay, yeah. made them pay or work for mm -hmm. it. So, you know, I don't know, maybe immediate family, I suppose, but nothing farther than that. I, I've had friends that have, uh, they've told me, well, you've got so much stockpile that I'm not going to bother to stockpile anything, even though they had way more money than I had, you know, they were, had tons of mo more money than I had. And they just said, I'll just come over to your place and use your food. And finally I said, no, they happened to have a situation where I didn't have a wood burning stove or something and they did. So I told them, I said, you know, we'll exchange, you know, you, you, I'll share my food with you if you share this. So that kind of helped me in that situation to do something like that. So it's really a hard call to make. And I guess it just depends on you and your family's relationship and that type of thing. You know, uh, it's one of those things without knowing all the situation it's hard to say and he says but joseph's family had had money and paid they did pay but he did give it back yeah so and you know that's probably another thing why he did give it back was because, because they, they had offered, the right attitude yeah. and they offered although they didn't know that it was him though when he gave it back no but they still they still so they he didn't so they didn't know they, that it was joseph he knew that they were his family, but they didn't know that it was Joseph that was giving it back to them. But they were still willing so, in the first place, no matter who it was, they were willing to yeah. pay for it. So but they that's weren't just the going to Joseph, just mooching off of him. So you're right. I but, think that makes a difference. So, you know, unless they're willing to pay and help. You can gum. You're the man behind you're the, the camera man behind now, the, remember. You don't have to peek behind the curtain. The <laughs> I was going to say, I also think it's a picture of uh, Joseph as a type of Christ there and that God used him to give it to them out of grace after what yeah. they did to him trying to kill him. Yeah, Later. that's true. So mm -hmm. I think that's partly, so I'm not sure the Joseph story is necessarily what we need to use to decide how to handle that in this particular circumstance. He was basically a type of Christ. Although it might be the same just because of the attitude that, you know, where they were willing to do the, you know, yeah. I don't know. When my brother tried to kill me, I didn't give him his money back. <laughs> when did your brother try uh, to like kill me? Like many you, times. Many times. He was very mean. Was that to before me. or after you yes. thumped him on the head? We, that he deserved it. <laughs> he deserved I was self defense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding, guys. He only tried to kill me twice. <laughs> only twice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, you know what I'd make them do? They'd have to hug each other. They hated that. You, you would think. That explains what's wrong with me now. You had to hug your brother when you guys were fighting. Naomi, <laughs> also, what price do you buy your flour and sugar? Have you ever made homemade tortillas with corn flour? So, yes. Actually, I have homemade corn tortilla mix. It is a pain in the booty to make homemade tortillas. But I before right before our kitchen was gone, <laughs> 
I was making them, trying to get the flour used up. I didn't get them made up or I didn't get them gone. Um, well, I don't, do we have the recipe in volume one? No. Mm -mm. We didn't we put that no. either. Mm. I could never find a recipe with to do it. Um, Naomi also wants to know what price do I buy flour and sugar? I don't know now. It's I haven't had to, to buy flour and sugar for two years almost. Yeah. Coming up on two years. And so I don't have a stock up price because I've been using my stockpile of flour it's, and sugar. It's hard so. to keep up with the prices changing. And you just watch, you know, check yeah. your area out. And here Walmart is usually the cheapest for me. And um, let me just look here, here real quick and I can tell you. But um, well, if I can get my internet to load. But um, sometimes it might go on sale for... Thanksgiving or Christmas possibly, but here for five pounds is two twenty four at Walmart. That seems for ten pounds it's four dollars. So it seems to be about um, the best deal for uh, uh, for twenty five pounds it's nine dollars. So that's the kind of prices that I have here, but I don't think that's a necessarily stellar price, but it's not probably hoard either so sometimes i don't know if they'll do it for easter or not but they do put them on sale sometimes and like tara said at thanksgiving and christmas around then and that's when i stock up for at least the next year because yeah. it'll last that long you know yeah uh transformation station effective mouse bait is peanut butter yes mm -hmm. on mouse traps yep yeah that's what we do Janice, I live in a log cabin here in California for 43 years. Heat with burning stove. I use peppermint to keep the bugs away. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good idea. Sweet Bark and Berries says, mice are attempting to kick me out. My dog has caught a couple. Yeah, so actually I used to have a dog that would catch them. I, well, you, I know. Didn't Buster both yeah. of them and Mon Frere? Uh, Mon Frere did. I don't remember if Buster Oh, he'd go dead, crazy. But, he'd no. be worse than a cat when it comes to the mice. Yeah, it was kind of gross. Um... <laughs> Wanda, she's got mice. They're not eating the cheese and traps. Try peanut butter. Peanut butter. actually works better. Um, and I because the peanut butter sticks and they can't take it with them, so they stay and then they actually step on it. And yeah. And I might be wrong, but I thought I heard some place where if they drink Coke or something, they explode. They kind of explode inside. <laughs> Although I don't know if I want to explode. <laughs> I don't deal with mice any better than I do bugs, so I'm not going to say. Cheryl, I've used powder eggs and quiche, and it was fine. Yeah, powder. I use powder oh, eggs. All I the love time. powdered yeah. eggs, especially for baking them. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wonder wants to know what is the difference between shelf pasta and dehydrated freeze ones. Mm. Really, don't waste your money on dehydrated pasta or freeze dried pasta. I mean, it's fine and it will last 25 years, but pasta in general, because pasta does not have the amount of oil that regular just flour does it doesn't spoil as quickly and mm -mm. pasta will last 10 15 years so i wouldn't but waste and you have to, you guys need to think about this if you're rotating this stuff out like you're supposed to you shouldn't have you know anything yeah. going bad have you stockpiled for pets oh i was gonna say something that would get me really in trouble <laughs> um <laughs> no so Pets can fend for themselves in an emergency situation. They can eat, eat leftovers. They can eat people They food. can eat rice. So no, I do not stockpile certain dog food up the wazoo or anything like that. They can eat rice with some bacon grease or some, yeah. some grease in there of some sort. Um, and so, no. When, pets... when my dog was sick, the vet would actually tell me to do like a cup of rice and just a little bit of crumbles of like hamburger, a little chicken or something, mm -hmm. just enough to add flavor to it. And he said that's best for their stomach. And so yeah. you really can use your own food yeah. for the pet. Mike, go ahead and send me the next batch. Tammy Jo says, what version of the Bible do you recommend? NAS, ESV, thank you. So if you're just starting out, I would recommend the New Living Translation, the NLT. It's the easiest of all of them to read. But... Pretty much any of the newer translations, New King James Version, mm -hmm. New Living Translation, American Standard Version, English Standard Version, those are all good translations. So I would just stick with one of the main newer translations. New King James Version is an easy one to read. And just start with those and then um, 
then that will help you to um, get started reading the Bible. And then you can just read different translations as I, you want to see. I how use they the New King James. I think Michael used the ESV, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. So, so, so mm. they're both, you know, yeah. good. Uh, Transformation Station pay off our 30 year mortgage off in full after six years. Very good. good. Job. Very good, good. job. That is great. You guys are doing so good, good job paying these mortgages off. Darlene, I asked this one before, but it wasn't clear. I have flour that says packed on 3 2020. Nowhere is it a use by date. Will it be good? Yeah. So usually two years after that date is the best by date. And then you probably have another two years after that. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, Heba says, we both look beautiful wearing her favorite Thank color. You. Oh, she's from Egypt. Oh, wow. I don't know that's... we've ever had anybody from Egypt. I don't need. Oh, yeah, that's different. Huh? Let's see. Liz, hi, Tara. How uh, did you hear what they're saying about mummies now? Uh uh. <sighs> Speaking of Egypt, <laughs> do I even you can't know? call them mummies anymore. Oh, my word. What? Let's see. What can't call them mummies? What was it they were saying? They say that it's outdated and dehumanizing to call them mummies. <laughs> I'm like. Those are elitist so, college people with nothing else to do. Yes. I'm like, oh, so it's a mummified person <laughs> or mummified remains. <laughs> Oh my word, people! You gotta get a. You gotta. Yeah, it's like Mike said. It's a professor who doesn't have enough to do. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what is, how long does vegetable broth good after the expiration date? Oh, like two, if it's three, four, can yeah. yeah. If it's years, can for yeah. a long time. Kimberless minimalists only keep a week at a time. Drives me crazy. Yes, I know. It drives me crazy too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Kawala says need a little Jesus talk. Okay. <laughs> Naomi, also, what price? Oh, sorry. Um, Denise, bay leaves in your beans and rice and grains helps deter bugs. Peppermint keeps the spiders and mice. Very good. Diatomaceous mm -hmm. earth for roaches. Yep. Mm -hmm. Jay Moore, never seen a weevil. What are they? They're super, super tiny. Well, not super tiny. You can see them. Yeah. After they hatch out, they're. They look like little worms. And then. Before, let's see, after the worms turn to bugs, then they're little black crawly bugs. Just Google it. You'll you'll see it. But yeah, it's kind of gross. But when they do the flour and stuff in the factories and everything, it always they always have there's just the eggs in the flour and the it corn comes meal. from the silo just storing the yeah. flour. It's just normal. Yeah, it's, it's not anything. Every, every flour, every type of flour has it. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually you use it up and bake it right away. And so, but if you put it in the freezer, it just kills the eggs and everything. So you won't even know you have them in there, but yeah, they're more yeah common usually they're yeah. more common. Um, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to be careful too for the bugs uh, that I found out in Kansas is check your potatoes, your bags of fresh potatoes when you bring them in the house because they can bring in roaches mm -hmm. so if you know you might just look them over a little bit and see oh, i know but i don't live in kansas oh anymore i'm sorry i hate roaches so bad i am getting we a had, little... i had flying roaches that were about two inches oh. i am getting a little sick of um the snow mm. but the good news is the good news is it's going to be 55 i think a week from friday or something Tana sent a me a meme and it says <laughs> it's a big snowy picture like all of Wyoming is right now. It's all snow right now. It says on the positive note, I haven't seen a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to tick me off is somebody told me they're expecting this to be the hottest summer we've had in a while. I'm already really ticked if we go from five feet of snow to 106 degrees <laughs> in the week. We probably will, too. Oh, my goodness. I just... Um, oh, there. Do you want to see your brother-in-law? <laughs> um, okay. Janice says, we have a stockpile. We call it the little store. It's been a lifesaver. Well, there you go. She gets all of hers for free almost with deals and coupons. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's good. Kat says, I've never had a problem with anything getting in my food supply other than ants. Yeah, ants can be a problem, too. Mm -hmm. 
But to show you the difference in the way people think, my mom always told me this story. She'd go visit her grandma and grandpa in Minnesota, and she poured, her grandma would make mm. pancakes, and she poured the syrup onto the pancakes, and there were ants in the syrup. And her grandpa made her eat them. He said, there's nothing wrong with them. They won't won't hurt you. They're dead. He said, just eat it. You're not going to waste that pancake. He, but that's the way people thought back then because food was so scarce. You know, you just We're going to be in for a rude awakening. We are. When actual famine starts happening. Yeah. Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya, I stockpiled winter of 2014. Had a tough winter. Was in my house a week and was glad to have extra food. Yeah. I mean, at any time well, after this winter... I would say at least the highways in Wyoming, and that did not include this last storm. They said that the Wyoming, that the highways in Wyoming have been closed between October to um, the beginning of March 55 times, mm -hmm. 55 days the highways were closed in Wyoming. And so for us, it's a matter of life and death. Oh, and you know what? When Mike was looking up stockpile stuff, do you know what he found out? Wyoming is the number one place for stockpile stuff. Well, I can understand why. Yeah. And I wasn't because I couldn't even hardly make it into town, you know, for like a week or so I would go. And she lives a mile from town. And I just, yeah, I live right <laughs> close. So it's not that far. But I just had to stay in because my driveway was covered, you know, on the road out front and everything. Well, it wasn't totally covered. That's not true, Mom. Someone's been plowing for you. <laughs> yes, I have it's had not somebody <laughs> plowing my driveway for me. <laughs> Hmm. Janice, uh, or Jeanette says, I continue to learn something new from us every time she watches. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Janice says, I donate food items that I get for free that we do not care to use. Yes. And yeah. That's totally that's, fine. Yeah, yeah. That's totally. And I'm not saying you're not supposed to ever no, donate no. anything. That's although not... personally, I think money is better spent to other causes than food banks. I think food banks are one of the top wastes of money in the country, but even just to give food, uh, the money. Just to give them money or buy food to give to the food makers. It's but, more the attitude of people mm -hmm. thinking if you have extra food, you should just always, you know, give it yeah. to everybody. It's more that type of thing. SL says, I use a permanent marker to write all of my cans. Yep. Yeah, that's what I use too. Debbie says, I made first fudge brownies from volume one. Yes, our Dining and Dime cookbooks are 25% off right now. Fudge brownies are in our volume one and our gluten-free, dairy-free. And then we have our volume two. Guys, these are basic recipes to help you save money on your grocery bill. I guarantee you will save money on the first trip, but it's not just recipes. We have menu plans. Mm. We have over um, 800 tips on how to just save money on your grocery bill, on different tips to do. As a matter of fact, I thought about as soon as I get my kitchen back doing a series, just going through the cookbook and doing all of the tips in the cookbook and just showing you guys what I have, what all the tips we, are in there. We have recipes for cleaning supplies, a whole section on, uh, you know, cleaning supplies and that type of thing on toiletries on how to make what aftershave and lotion and stuff like that. We even have, like, I think I mentioned the last time I was on a uh, children's section where you can make sidewalk chalk and slime. So we have huge chapters. That's just not food in there, you know, so the last time you on, you were talking about meal planning. Uh -huh. So I went to go shorten that. So we're taking some of our lies and turning them into shorter videos. I couldn't because the simple trick for meal planning <laughs> was an hour long video, mother. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. <laughs> um, Ashley says she's so happy that we're live. Well, thank you. Thanks. Wendy says I am not gluten free, so would I benefit from getting the gluten free? No, no. The well, I knew, I knew the answer to that. <laughs> I would not get this the gluten, -free. gluten free cookbook is adapted is adapted from Volume One. Yeah. So it's just the gluten free version of Volume One. And there's a few more things so. in. Dining one of the extra stuff like I was talking about. But the gluten-free, but if you have dining one and you're gluten-free, you need to buy the gluten-free because all the baked goods in gluten-free are totally different from dining because they have to be, because you can't just switch. You can for some recipes, but gluten-free baking, you can't just switch gluten-free flour for regular flour. It doesn't always work. There is a science to it. Um... Sarah, what's the best brand of uh, pest control plugin? I don't know. I just I just have a Sonic one. We might have the one that I have on our Amazon store. Mike, can you put the link for our Amazon store on there? 
Um, it might be in there. I think I put it in there. I can't remember. I think most of them work pretty good if you get just yeah. a, a good name one, you know. Wanda, if you, and by and the way, they're they're not very, I mean, they pay for themselves. I've had mine 25 years, and that's all I've had to use for bug stuff. So uh, they pay for themselves, even if they're like $20 or something. Yeah. Wanda says, if you keep brown rice in the fridge, how long can you keep it? I mean, I would carry probably six months to a year past the expiration date, probably. It's, it's kind of like an oil base, isn't it, the brown rice? Yeah. yeah but, I mean, so. I know it can go at least six months. But if it's refrigerated, maybe a year. If you freeze it, I could say maybe two years, maybe. But Yeah. Mary says, thank you for helping me refine my stockpiling. You are welcome. Good. You are welcome. And, you know, it helps if you have it organized, you know, and under control. Because then you actually use it and you're not wasting money on the groceries. Um. Carol or Carol, wait, Carol Ann says we are now eating some regular instant pudding best by 1999. Tastes fine. Well, there you go. I know. I had some, it was, it, I've had some that was 10 years old at least. So I don't think it ever. Sandy, she just got volume two. Thank you. Oh, thanks. So Kayla, I found your Amazon books. I'm so happy. Yeah, we do have ebooks on Amazon too. Um, Mike can put a link, by the way, which they are affiliate links, guys. So we get a small commission when you purchase from Amazon using those links. And no extra cost to you, but we do get a small commission. Jennifer, I learned to only stockpile what we eat. We aren't as fancy as my Pinterest show, as my Pinterest shows us to be. <laughs> That's good. I love that. Interest in ingredients <laughs> and base items are key. Yes. <laughs> I love those those Pinterest shots that shows what you see on Pinterest and then what yours turned out like. You know, I love those pictures like yes. that because it's so true. Diane. I was thinking of the signs that, um, so I have a hole in my kitchen I have to fill. And I was like, okay, maybe I could put a cute sign there. And I saw this sign that said, many have eaten here, few have died. <laughs> and then the other one was, I think some of y'all's cornbread ain't quite done in the middle. <laughs> I can't decide between the two. <laughs> So I may have to rotate. Yeah, I was going to say, just rotate. <laughs> that would be hilarious if we had people over and I had different signs and they changed. Oh, that would be funny. <laughs> Diana, I need a non-dairy cake and frosting for Easter. I have, I can have gluten recipe substitutions to use. Just use any kind of non-dairy milk is fine. I use rice milk because it's a more, it's the most neutral. But you can use soy, soy flour, almond, or I mean, soy milk, almond milk, any of those. Just substitute it and it's fine. I'm laughing because I watched Anita Renfro. Is that her name? She's a comedian, Christian comedian. And she was talking about all the new milks and everything about the nut milk. She said, what in the world are these nut milks? How do you milk a nut? She said, I still can't figure that one out. But, but if you guys have our gluten-free book, it's gluten-free and dairy-free. We have had to make all those milks at home. So like the $5 that you pay for it at the store, you can make it for literally 20 cents out using the recipe in our cookbook. So just with the nut milks alone, <laughs> you will save on our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. Dale says, I found a cake mix in 2022, added a baking powder, added a bit of baking powder to be safe, tastes good. Yep, very yeah. good. The only thing with cake mixes is the baking powder might not still be good. And so if that's the case, it won't rise. So you can just add an extra half teaspoon, teaspoon of baking powder to it and you're fine. Toti's Adventure says peanut butter is oil-based. How long past the expiration date? I just bought 10 jars. Um, so I would say probably a year past the date is mm -hmm. good, but I probably wouldn't go a whole lot longer than that. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna make you sick. No. It's just gonna taste bad. Yeah. And you'll yeah. smell you'll, it if you I was open gonna it. Say, you'll, you'll smell, smell it. it the minute you open you'll it. Know. So you'll know. None of this stuff really poisons you. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about that today. So many people are doing the organic, you know, and that type of thing that they're worried without all the stuff on them. But I think more people die from like E. coli and different stupidity. Sorry. Well, you know, different. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be tactful here. I'm trying my best. Sorry, I said it out loud. I'm sorry. And my daughter just puts words in my mouth. <laughs> but, you know, you can get a lot of bacterial and different type of illnesses from eating the, the organic stuff. And um, and so I think people are so afraid that the stuff, when it goes bad in the cans or like the peanut butter and stuff, that it's going to 
physically hurt them. It's not. It's just going to taste. I wouldn't yucky. eat meat that is expired meat. and smells bad. But no. peanut butter is not going to hurt but you. But the thing is, if you can't get it past your nose, you're not going to probably eat it. That's the true test mm -hmm. of any of this stuff. You know, I can smell oatmeal. You know, I keep oatmeal years past what it's supposed to be, and I can tell right away when it's not any good. Oh, speaking of oatmeal, can I interrupt you for make this a little bit longer? To think out of the box about using some of your, your uh, prepping canned goods and stuff. For example, I don't use instant oatmeal that fast, but I like to keep some on hand for an emergency because all I have to do is boil a little, little water and then I'll be you know, have something. So what I started doing is in place of regular oatmeal, I use the instant oatmeal for making like um, a peach uh, crisp or something like that. It usually sometimes they'll call for oatmeal and brown sugar and cinnamon and, sh you know, that type of thing. So I just take my package of um, the instant oatmeal and use that on top of a can of peaches or fresh peaches, whatever I have. And that way you can use, think of recipes like that, that you can use this stuff in. Yep. Okay, um, Create Happy Healthy Cozy Home says, Tara, my young adult salon was so elated to get your cookbook. He loved that you had a section in which foods, yes, that's volume one, which foods freeze and how long they last. Right here, volume one. Who knew I should have had the freezer talk with my kids? I know. My problem is I tried to tell my kids some of these things. If my daughter's still on here, I love you, my dear. <laughs> but... <laughs> They didn't want to learn, so now I know learning I had on their the, own. I had the exact same problem when my kids were growing up. <laughs> they wouldn't listen. But, your but child you know what? Perfect. I'm glad you. Yeah, listen to this. I I'm glad you made that comment mm -hmm. because the first remember when we first started selling the cookbook, we were so shocked because we had more moms say that they're young, you know, they're older, young, mm -hmm. young, nineteen, twenty something sons that though that age range loved our cookbook mm -hmm. and we never have been able to really figure out why they like but so many young men love the cookbook too yep sue says i don't make enough money to stockpile that's just not true yeah. so you need to just buy when stuff is on sale and it does not take a huge amount if you are getting your nails done if you're getting manicures pedicures if you're buying starbucks if apps you're on going, your phone apps mm -hmm. on your phone if you're going to movies if you're doing any storm of form of entertainment at all that you're paying for going out to eat, you can take that money and use it to stockpile. The other thing is just every time you go to the grocery store, just buy five more cans of food. Just buy five additional cans of food. Buy what's on sale. Just get five more each time you go. I have not met one person who could not afford an extra $20 a month to get their stockpile going. They just don't want to. When I was living off of $500 a month, I could still buy stuff yeah. for my stockpile. I didn't buy huge amounts, yeah. but I would get something every once in a while. Yeah. Sandra, I bought my youngest daughter, your dairy free cookbook, which is the green one, 25% off right now, living on a dime.com guys. When she found out her baby had a dairy allergy, she loves your book. They are both dairy free now, loves the recipes in the books. Yes. All my kids could not have dairy when they were born. So I totally, totally feel for you. Uh, create a happy, healthy home says, how long past the best buy date? May I you may I keep my eggs? Mike, go ahead and send me the next one. Um, I've used eggs that are like a month old. I was going to say a month, at least a month. I've had them for a month. So um, I don't know if I'm supposed to do that, but I have because I ain't going to waste but, them. But the, Yeah, but there's a test. What's the test of where you put it in the water? I forget. I think you can look it up. think if they float, they're good. But if they don't float, they're bad or vice versa. Vice versa. Just test Just, it. Just test how to, let's see, just Google, Google how to test if eggs are bad. It, it'll pop right up for you. And I would just test it, but I've had them for at least a month. Over. Yeah. Mike says floating he thinks floating is bad. bad. I don't know. Just Google it, but you, there's a test that you can do. It's really easy. Um, Mike's sending me the next questions. Okay, here we go. Um, update housewife with your chocolate lava cake. So chocolate that's lava cake one. is volume one. That's very delicious. You say Good pour one. water over the top and bake it. Is that what you really mean? Yeah. Now, when I say something, <laughs> I do not mean. <laughs> of course, that's what I mean. That is how you make the fudgy lava part on the inside. On the inside. Yeah. It seems yeah. weird. The first time I ever did this recipe years and years ago, as a matter of fact, this was back from the 
I think 60s. My yeah. it was my mom did it the first time too. And to pour that water, it was so hard for us just to pour that water and put it in the oven, but that's what you do. <laughs> Vera says, how long are cake mix is good? Usually about 18 months to two years past the expiration date. And like she said, if you just add the extra uh, baking powder into it. Kim, you bet your bottom dollar. My family will be helping out at the farm when they come to get food from my stockpile. I try to encourage them to stockpile themselves, but they think <laughs> it's good, good for you. Kim. That's good. I mean, I know that's a hard one. And, it, uh, and we inevitably, every single time, we know there are exceptions to pretty much every single thing we say. We get that. But we go on the majority of people. So if your mother and mother-in-law or kids or whatever are perfectly healthy and not disabled, they can help out, you know, for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't just be giving it to them just to let them mooch off of you. But you probably wouldn't let know. somebody just mooch off of you on a regular basis. So, you know, it wouldn't be any different. Janice, I made homemade tortillas with masa. Very easy. Yes, that's what I use. Um, hi, ladies. Her first lie from R Oats. Hello. Susan, our Walmart doesn't sell great value gluten-free all-purpose flour. Any other? Yeah. Any of any. I prefer the great value because it's the cheapest gluten-free flour. But Pamela's all-purpose flour, um, Bob's uh, all-purpose, I tested it with that. I tested it with... Um, King Arthur's gluten-free flour, all of those will work just fine. It's just the gluten-free was the cheapest one. Um, okay, Loretta says, how do you answer people who say some foods should not eat according to the Bible? Well, I would say that they're wrong because in the New Testament, okay, we got criticized for not using Bible verses. So let me look it up. But in the New Testament, it says, it's what? Oh, thank you. I was going to say, Mike needs to look these up for me before we get there. Okay. Mark 7, 19 says, for it doesn't go into the heart, but into the stomach and then out of the body. Okay. That's in saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean or yeah, all foods clean. So they're wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. But in the New Testament, Jesus did say it's okay to eat whatever you want. But he also said that if it causes someone else to stumble, then you shouldn't do it. So, like, if you have a friend who's an alcoholic, even though it's okay to drink wine, you shouldn't be drinking wine in front of an alcoholic if they have a problem with that, you know, type thing. So, if people have a problem with that, then, you know... Be considerate and kind. Let them deal with it. They have to deal with that between them and God. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Do you have anything to add to that? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had a verse that we were talking about in oh. Acts. Although that one, I think, because it says Jesus declared it. This, this, that's yeah. Really well, and also it says that people who eat only vegetables are weak in there, too. I don't remember where that verse was. But <laughs> I read that. that in the, I read that. Daniel. No, well, yeah, but there was somewhere else that it said it too. It wasn't, I don't think it was that's Daniel that I was reading. That's why I don't eat too many vegetables because it make they make you weak. <laughs> yeah. Acts 10 15 is also the one where the blanket comes down showing yeah, that you're showing okay to eat all the all foods. foods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Melody, hey from London. Oh, good day. Oh, oh no, that's that's, that's Australia. Australia. Here, oh, right know, here. Look, Haya. you will re you will recognize here. You will recognize my mug that I actually got from Harrods right there. I actually bought it from Harrods. Someday I, I will shop. Do they at say Haya? Haya? I think. Did you hear that when you were in England? All the English murder mysteries know. I'm watching, they say that on there. Do they say that, dear? They say Haya. I don't recall Haya. When they walk in, they'll say Haya hmm. on the murder mysteries. I don't know. And I, did, I was just wondering if you do actually say that in England. We didn't witness that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, you're such a handsome man behind the curtain there. Um, <laughs> Big Pond Homestead. I love winter because I hate bugs. Us too. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's one reason why I'm glad we've had the winter we had, because that means we aren't going to have hardly any bugs this summer. But if we're having 50 degrees next week, that means that we're probably going to have flooding. So, Tanya, hats off to everyone who paid off their mortgage. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Wanda, when are you getting a little Bertha? Well, we got to figure out if mom's moving first or not. So, <laughs> Nikki, loved the way, Tara, you explained the Trinity with water. So informing and should be told again. So, it's not, I mean, it's... 
how do you explain the Trinity? You don't really explain the Trinity. It's kind of almost unexplainable. But the best, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the best example that I've given before is, think of it as water. Water is steam. Water is ice. And water is water. Well, they're all three water in different forms. So that's one way to explain that for people who, to give them some grasp of understanding. Um, Tony says she can't wait to start reading the cookbooks. Yes, a lot of people read our cookbooks like a novel. Yeah, they do it's all the time. So funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wendy, is your hand wrist better? Yeah, it's not totally better, but it's a lot better than it was, thankfully. So I kept it immobilized for a little while, and now it's doing better. Thank you, Janice. I make those fudge brownies from Dining on a Dime cookbook. Twenty five percent off right now. Living on a dime .com. Once a week, and I always double the batch. Yes. Mm -hmm. She loves that brownie recipe. That was the first recipe I ever made in home mm -hmm. ec. That was my first I remember the day recipe. you brought that recipe home, yep. too. I was so scared when you baked it. Oh, stop. <laughs> it Do you good. see the abuse I had good. to put up with? Uh, doodle toot i would love for you to do a video on your tips i love all your cookbooks and read through them continuously thank you <laughs> sandy brown i made the granola bars and they were a hit the pan in the pan what a hit the pan was gone in no time thank you granola bars are also that was it's another favorite one of my of first ours. recipes mm -hmm, that i put in there and for all of you wondering a granola bar is just a glorified chocolate cookie stuff cut in strips instead of <laughs> circles <laughs> i don't even know this just shows you marketing, how people will fall for anything. And you call an oatmeal cookie, if you if you cut an oatmeal cookie and put it into strips and call it a granola bar instead of an oatmeal cookie, then it's healthy. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know. Mm. Uh, Nancy Miller, gluten-free cookbook is the best money I've spent in a while. So worth it. Thank you. Thank you. Yay, I'm so glad you like it. Sue, Tars cookbooks will be great. Mother's Day gift mailed to mothers. Yes, we mm -hmm. do sell that Mother's Day and um, Black Friday are two big sales of the year. Coming up in a little bit. Yeah. Denise, I like your opinion is not part of the recipe. Yes. Oh my goodness. We get that a lot. <laughs> Amazing Grace Ranch, Tara, I have a price update for a 10-minute ambulance ride. I just got. Ooh. I would love to know what that was. <laughs> Let me guess. Let's see. What do I think your ambulance? I think your ambulance ride was $3,500. We'll see if I'm right. Carla, I love the cornbread quote. quote. Isn't that good? <laughs> Jack, how to milk a nut? Find the point it in and just keep squeezing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's my son. Is that my son? It sounds like something my son I was going to say. say. It sounds like my grandson. Lori, is jelly preserves in a jar still good after expires? Yes, because it's sugar is a preservative. Oh, jelly just, they yeah. found jelly 25 years old, I think, and they've still used it. Silk says, sometimes if you go to the website of the manufacturer, they have an email address where you can ask questions like that. I have done it and got a reply in at least a week. Yes, if you mm -hmm. have questions like that. Oh, now Ruth says she's watching from Maitland, North. NSW, North Southwest Australia. Australia. New South Wales. Oh, New South, South, South Wales. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> New South Wales, Australia. Oh, my goodness. I am so sorry. <laughs> that would make sense. New South Wales. Okay. That would be pretty cool. Uh -huh. Cheryl, how long does cream soup last after expression? A long time. 10 years, 10, 15 years. Lori, I got butter for two fourteen a pound at Aldi. Ooh, wow. We may or may not be making a trip back to Kansas in a few weeks. And if that's the case, I might have to have Mike bring back a carload of butter. From all these? <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't melt on the way. Because. No, if you if you put it in brown paper sack. Mm. And put no, it in the we're trunk, talking Kansas. And put it in the trunk. It'll be fine. This is Kansas. Debbie, dry instant mashed potatoes in a bowl of fresh soda pop kills rodents. Ooh, I bet it would. Oh. Yeah. Mary, thank you for doing the show. As, tar as tired as you are. Yes, I'm very sorry. I am extremely tired. Our remodel is going. It's not going, going, going well. <laughs> we we did we are getting counters in today. There's supposed to be epoxying counters tomorrow, but now we've had a setback right before the show started, so 
we gotta go shopping at Home Depot before um, tonight. But um, and we gotta go clean all the dust and everything. <laughs> but um, it's not anything really that's. It's just dumb stuff that's happening. And the contractor today said he hasn't had so many problems for a while. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, that's the story of my life. <laughs> so, Lori, I shop at Aldi for almost everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we had Aldi, we went there. That was our main grocery shopping. I did not buy meat because it was cheaper on sale at the grocery store, but everything else Everything. Was. Yeah, I bought everything there except meat. Um, Caroline, be careful when stockpiling for pet. Dry dog cat food has oil in it and can get mm -hmm. rancid. rancid. Yeah. That's why if you just plan on the rice with some of your canned meat for, you know, mm -hmm. or your leftovers and stuff. Yeah. If you could think about it. Animals used to, for years, they just ate what was left over from the people food mm -hmm. at dinner. And then uh, I remember it was probably like in the 60s or so, they started doing the dog food and everybody yeah. started buying dog food. This was a big deal. And I was laughing because like 10, maybe 15 years ago, then they started going back. This dog food has chicken in it and vegetables, just like you eat, or some, you know, the same foods that people eat. And people now, I went to a store and they had, where was it? They had in a refrigerated part fresh food for the dogs, like meat and vegetables mixed together, like people food. And I was laughing because I thought, here we went from they had people food and then they went to dog food. That was the only thing you should give them. And now they're going back to the people food again. So. Yeah. Um, and also, I think it was Connie who's in Deadwood, South Dakota. If you're watching, I got your email, but I am like super, super behind on my email with everything that's been going on. And so um, I did not get to answer you, but we probably won't be able to meet you this time, but we will try next time. Um, thank you for the offer, by the way. We'll take you up sometime. Kim, bet your bottom dollar my family will be helping out. At, oh, wait. Oops. Oh, wait. Sorry. My email got messed up. Um, let's see. Send me the next batch, Mike. Um, uh, Caroline, be careful. What's oh, yeah. Uh, Barbara, Tara, have you heard of flotation centers for fibromyalgia? They use high concentration of salt. I have not, but I will tell you that I have been, um, Epsom salts. Well, I guess it's not the same thing. I was going to say I've been to the hot springs, but that's not salt that they have a high concentration of. It's sulfur. So never mind. It's just minerals that they have in general. Um, I have done the hot springs. I haven't done the salt. Maybe I should just move to Israel. Oh, I can't move to Israel right now. That's no. not good. I was going to say maybe I should just move to Israel and do the dead, go float in the Dead Sea every day. <laughs> that would preserve me really well. Wow. I wouldn't age at all, I bet. You know what? If you're floating in the dead I was sea putting my earrings in tonight. I have wrinkles in my ear. Mother, you have wrinkles on your face too. Well, yeah, I can accept hands. that. But when it gets wrinkles in your ear and on your toes. Where do you have wrinkles on your ear? There, you can't see in the earrings hiding it. But there's a wrinkle and they're on my toes. And I'm thinking, does that mean I'm totally going downhill? Is that the well, end? There's you're no over hope? 70 wrinkles in my ear i never dreamed when you got old you'd get wrinkles in your ear my mother mike can you play the song you're so vain <laughs> <laughs> well i'm just surprised that there's wrinkles in an ear well, what did you expect i don't know i thought there would be one part of me that would still be beautiful and <laughs> no not really <laughs> oh mother <laughs> Oh, and, you know, I've said this before. Have you ever noticed how on these serums and these creams and it says it gets rid of fine lines and wrinkles? I'm thinking, who wants to get rid of the fine lines and wrinkles? It's these big, deep canyons, you know, that I want to get. What's good at getting rid of the fine lines and wrinkles when you got these big, deep ditches that's in your face? Mother. <laughs> oh, that's Botox. <laughs> Jennifer, spring, so you can look like. Yeah. <laughs> There's a thumbnail. Mike, here, get a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> spring is on the way tara and jill better oh. not be hot my summer vacation at home better be nice oh my goodness oh. you can send me the next one. Oh, <laughs> tara with botox um, frugal botox send me the next <laughs> oh man let's get through all that yeah i wonder oh five i didn't huh 
Elizabeth loves our matching tops, and it's all Elizabeth, our daughter. <laughs> My daughter. Terry, I have rice and beans for a long-term storage, but I'm thinking both these would take too long and too much energy to make if everything is scarce. Mm -hmm. Yes. What would be better to store? So I would store mashed potato flakes. I would mm -hmm. store canned beans. If you like beans, canned beans are a good way to do that. And um, start with minute rice instead of regular rice, but start with, you know, like dry crackers and things like that are also good. But the what the instant potatoes are so good you just have to boil water think of things that you uh need to just have hot water like canned soups and stuff like that are better because all you have to do is mix it with water you know mary wants to know what's the difference between the second coming and the rapture which comes first so the rapture comes first and then the second coming the rapture is where people who have given their life to christ and are christians go up to meet Jesus in the air while the seven year, and then they're in heaven while the seven year tribulation happens here on earth. Then at the end of the seven year tribulation, then the second coming Christ and all of us are going to come back for the final war on earth. And that's going to be the and second coming. And then we'll coming. reign for a thousand years on, on earth. earth. Yep. Rebecca, everything that comes into my house other than milk and fresh produce either gets the day purchased or the best buy date written on it. Very mm -hmm. good. Wow. Yeah. You are organized. <laughs> you are very organized. I 30 seconds before the show, I'm deciding what the 10 tips are. So I'm <laughs> impressed. <laughs> Mike, am I exaggerating oh, on that? I was going to show this. <laughs> I wanted to okay, show, show, show my thing. Okay. It drives me crazy five minutes before the show. And she's like, I know. what are the tips I'm sharing like, today? I don't even know what we're going to be talking about. And she says, and take it over, mom. <laughs> it's like, take what over? I don't even know what subject is. But anyway, I have been thinking about you poor people in Texas and the heat when we were talking last. <laughs> I really, I think about you guys when you have situations. I don't, because that's why I moved to Wyoming. When, when you have situations, <laughs> I try to figure out how to help you. And I went to the Dollar Tree, and look what I found. This Now, I've seen the handheld ones where you just hold them in front of your face, and you can even clip some onto your hat or something. But I don't wear hats, and to have to hold a thing up in my hand forever. But look at this little fan. It can set like this, or you can hook it up and hang it on something. And I, you would be surprised how much this would help you just having it blowing on your face. And I know I'm joking about it, but seriously, if you got, if you could get like four or five of these, they're battery operated. So you'd have to have plenty of batteries, but if you have somebody ill or older, these might actually help a little bit in an because situation. in an emergency, you may not even have a whole lot of water to spare. So even to take a shower to wet down would be kind of hard. So you know, okay. guys, I think I would get a few of these if you're in Texas and down south and Arizona and places like that, because it's it is miserable when you don't have anything. So, see, I think about you all the time. <laughs> Mary, do we have Patreon? No, we don't have Patreon. Sorry. We that was a total flop for us. Francis, have you made any impossible pies from Betty Crocker? Mm, probably, but I didn't realize it. But I mean, I've heard I of did them, years um, ago. Mary, I need more stockpiling room. My garage is 110 in the summer. Bad idea. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Yeah. I wouldn't put your food if your garage gets that hot. I have a spare closet yeah. that I put mine in. in you different... could maybe put, if that's the only place you have, you could maybe put like blankets on top of it to kind of help insulate it from the heat a little bit. But And even when you buy furniture or look around at your furniture, like a tar we saw at the ReStore the other day, a coffee table that raises up and it has storage in the bottom mm -hmm. think when you buy your furniture can i store things in there can i get ottomans that have storage and then you could put you know stuff in there and different things well and i don't make much money and i stockpile I use my food stamps to buy stuff on sale and mark down a little at a time after a while it adds up very, very good, good. Yes. yes it is doable if you don't have much money crystal says for the water egg test eggs floating is bad okay so if your eggs sink they're good fill a glass of water if your eggs sink to the bottom, they're good. If they float, they're not good. Yeah. Which actually that would make sense because the bacteria would be expanding, causing them to float probably. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, Mary, questions on gluten-free flour. I'm allergic to almonds and cashew. What is a good cheap flour? The best one that I like is the Great Value Walmart in the purple bag. I used it this morning to make pancakes and they're just, it's just delicious. Crystal, I'm so glad we're back. 
or go, so glad to be back. You have no idea. I've been dealing with cancer issues. Oh, oh so no. sorry, Crystal. Oh, she did, but they can't keep her away from here. Oh, oh thank that's you. so I'm sweet. So sorry, yeah, that's awful. Um, she loves connecting mugs, mugs, and she does say they do say hi. Yeah, they do. Okay, I don't I, remember that when we were there. But it seems like be. all of them on the shows I watch say hi yeah, all the time. All age groups say hi. Yeah, no. Kimberly or no. Sharon wants to know, are you moving? We don't know if mom's moving yet. I don't so. know. Kimberly, uh, huge. After a two-year fight with my husband, finally won his workman's comp case. Oh, my goodness. Oh. They are now trying to figure out what back money they owe us. My husband had to retire due to his injury at work. He was a postal worker. Figures, the post office. <laughs> yeah. And the injury was to his hand. Thank you. Or, or So our prayers have been answered. Praise the Lord. Very, very good. Yes, that is great. I'm so thankful for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys, we have some great prayer warriors on here. If you have any needs, you know, pop on there. They don't mind praying for you. You know, Tanya says, is there a song, Dumb Ways to Die? You, there is a song, Dumb Ways to Die. You just reminded me of it. Oh, my goodness. Don't get me started. Some of the dumb things. You're just like, really, people? <laughs> um, is freezing self-rising flower harm the flower? No, mm -mm. it doesn't. Uh, Smucker's red plum jam is the best. I didn't even know Smucker's had it red is. gum glug. I've been eating. I got opened a jar about a week and a half ago. Do I have it here? Yeah, and mm, I, I should love try because I love jams and jellies. Because uh, my grandmother in law, she made plum jelly, uh, wild plum jelly, and it was the best. Huh. And I never got I a recipe. And they, I saw that they had it here, and it was it's really good. You're right. Hmm. Yeah, I I'll love have it. to get some. I went to the jelly aisle at Avalson's the other day and I went and asked the guy, I said, can you tell me where your jelly aisle is? And he's like, oh, it's right down there. I said, that's your jelly aisle. I'm not kidding. They had a section that was like this, mm, maybe this big and about this tall. And that's all the jellies they had at Albertsons. That was it. I got mine at, at Walmart. I hate Albertsons here. I know you love it. I'm sorry. I hate the Albertsons. <laughs> I necessarily love it. I, I got grapes from problems. there and half of them were rotted. And here I buy all my bananas at Albertsons because they don't spoil as fast as Walmart's. Totes, questions. Do you have a freeze dryer? No. But I, I do not think they are worth it. I think they are a huge waste of money. If you want to have one, that's fine. If you got but the I money. I personally think they're a huge waste of money. Do you know how much stockpile food you can buy with for $3,500 for $4,000 for one of those things? I mean, if they gave me one for free to test or whatever and show, I would take it like we did our dehydrator, but I don't think it's worth $3,500 or $4,000. That's a lot of food you can buy. Mm -hmm. Even, even the 25 year food. Now don't get me wrong. The food tastes really good. I love dehydrated. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, I love freeze dried peaches so and strawberries. So if you got the money to get it, go for it. But... I mean, if I had a freeze dry freeze dryer i would use it because i love freeze dried fruits and stuff yeah. i mean i think they're just they're delicious so good. but but you know if it's gonna if you're gonna have to struggle buying it that's a different story yeah qt says my grandmother used to put uncooked oatmeal in her meatloaf yep mm -hmm. i that's what i do for my gluten-free meatloaf single guy simple life next mike mike now most of my grocery hauls each month are stockpile items wow, wow. that's impressive. good impressive mm -hmm. very impressive um there's shannon <laughs> hello shannon, shannon. Happy face i don't have my glasses on i can't read anything but i can see when you're on there that's for sure with happy faces yeah um <laughs> sweet barks and berries the bible does not stipulate if the rapture happens before or after the tribulation i have heard good scriptural arguments for pre mid and post i go with pan trib it will all pan up in the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, Listen, I personally think the Bible does give very <laughs> specific structure, very specific verses that the rapture is going to happen before. But I'm not going to, if somebody doesn't believe that, I can see why they, why they wouldn't think that. So I'm not like, you're not going to go to hell because of it. No. It's not like one of the, yeah. <laughs> one of the, you know not going to hell because of it versus, but, mm -hmm. um, anyway, yeah. How long does flavored oatmeal packets last? Quite a while. I would say 18 months. Yeah, they two do years last. At least. Well, I had some that was from 2019. 
and they're still fine. So single guy, simple life says, I'm going to try to make homemade brownie mix from your cookbook. Yes. Mm. Really? With some extra cocoa powder I have on hand. Also make the um, hot cocoa mix is a really good one too. If you make the hot cocoa mix, it's so. really good. But what I do sometimes is I double the amount of chocolate pudding and I double the amount of Just powdered recipe. sugar in those. You don't have to have a diabetic attack to drink <laughs> cocoa like my mother recipe. And that's a good recipe to use f with your um, prepping stuff mm -hmm. because it calls for dry milk and stuff like that and you can rotate your dry milk it's really As good matter of fact i have some i'm going to be using that for yeah and you know. especially close to christmas time you can use it up and make the the hot chocolate mix and give it for gifts you know and things like that so yeah. um mary beth says what's the best way to store long-term brownie mix or cake mix you know, I I've, store it in the box. I do. And mm -hmm. I've had, they've been years past the expiration date. So I just leave it. In, don't make this too hard. I don't do anything mm -hmm. that I don't have to for extra work. Because what happens is when you start doing all these extra steps and things to doing it, eventually you'll burn out maybe and mm -hmm. quit doing it. So I'd rather see you just keep things very simple and don't take thing out of things out of packages and don't, you know, vacuum seal things that don't need to be vacuum sealed. Just, you know, do the minimal amount. Kimberly says, remember when testing eggs, dead men float. Don't eat floating eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that now. That's true. It's <laughs> yeah. all the bacteria causing you to poof up. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, you guys. <laughs> you come up with some good ones. <laughs> uh, Janice says, my baby at, at the time and I lived out of our car. We were homeless. We rose above it all with believing we could in God. And we are so fine now. Yes, mm -hmm. that is great. Yeah. It's all, yeah. It's all your uh, attitude and your willingness to, you know, rise above it. So I have found my milk lasts way longer past the expiration date. Oh, yeah. Oh. Two weeks is what I get out of mine a lot of times. Well, I what's the date today? I had some that expired on the 15th. And what's the date today? It's still 29th, good. So 29th, so two weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kylie says, people throw things away that are just past the best buy date. Makes me crazy. It's still good. I know. I know. I know. I know. It drives me nuts, too. Susan, we're all so cute. We're so cute together. <laughs> Do we ever quarrel? Oh. She drives me crazy. What did I holler at you about the other day? Oh, painting. Yes, and she keeps <laughs> nagging me about painting. You want to see us fight? She's stop nagging me she's about painting. She's killing herself. I'm and not she won't let killing me myself. I am painting five minutes, and I have to wait for it to dry, and then five minutes, and I wait for it to dry. What's killing me is making three million decisions on the kitchen that I have to make, like where each nail is going. That's what's killing me. It has nothing to do with painting. <laughs> <sighs> I did lose my, I did get upset with her the other, I don't get upset with you too often though. Do but I? you're wrong. Cause I'm not doing, ask Mike. He's I know wrong. if he was only there doing 15 minutes, I said, that's fine. I've been painting I all day long. That's fine. I've just been in my painting clothes. Yeah. She's just cause I'm <laughs> in my painting clothes. All day long. Doesn't mean. And I said, that's fine. Didn't I? See? So yes, we mm -hmm. do. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we don't get so mad though that we never speak each other to each other for a long ever. No, not like the that. Uh -uh. Not this week. Not this week. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Katie, I want to tell you all tell to tell all dishwashers out there that fried eggs are cleaned off the plate better with cold water. I did not know that. I yeah, was, they that are. Would be interesting to know because I hate cleaning eggs off the plate. I that I learned in home ec years and years ago. It's a shame they don't have home ec anymore to teach, you know. Yeah. Okay, I have no idea how to say this name. Sly, maybe? S-Y-L. As a Londoner, I usually say hi, yeah, to friends. So there you go. We mainly just say hello, though, Melody says. <laughs> <laughs> and she's in the UK, so. Marilyn Moros is a trainee. Explain to me, I'm a daughter, I'm also a mother, and I'm also a grandmother. Yes, that's a very mm -hmm. good way to that's explain it way. also. Uh, Enrod says, what are you painting now? Um, so I'm working on my laundry room and my kitchen still. I We have blown through our budget. We have blown through the doubling of our budget, and now we are just out of money <laughs> for the kitchen remodel. So I am doing a lot of the painting and touch-up work, but it's little stuff like 
I had to caulk a cabinet, had to wait for the caulk to dry. Then I had to paint one little line, wait for that to dry, paint a little line again because the stupid uh, Home Depot bare paint is like water. And so, um, um, so I'm doing little stuff like that. And then, um, I'm also working on painting the living room as soon as that's done, but I haven't gotten to that part yet. I still have all the plastic and stuff up. It's been up for what, a month now? I think mm -hmm. since we painted it last, but they keep needing me to answer questions and stuff, or I'll go and look at something and think, oh, that's not how I want the kitchen or something. So that kind of stuff is what's taking time. Tara, as I'm watching, Connie. Oh, she is watching. Oh, yes. So, Connie, I am really sorry. I didn't answer your email. I am like, guys, I've been doing all this stuff with the kitchen remodel and trying to get videos and stuff. So, I'm like really super behind on um, on emails. So, I'm really sorry. A couple of people asked about soap. I'm going to get to you. But, Connie, we're going to take you up probably later, maybe early summer or something. So, thank you. We're just, I think we're just going to drive through for right now. So, just so you know. I'm so sorry for not getting back to you. I did not mean to forget that. Yeah, Tara's usually really <laughs> good about answering her emails well, and well, sending thank you that. notes and stuff. So you know it must be bad yeah. if she's not. Everyone says you're beautiful, Mother. Thank you. Oh, you guys are good for my eagle. <laughs> Nancy says Fish. wrinkles are a badge of honor. <laughs> um, we're wearing cornflower blue. I don't know. What color are you wearing, Mike? Are you matching too? I don't think Mike no, is matching. No, he's not matching. I'm wearing a nice ensemble of blue. <laughs> <laughs> an ensemble of blue and green, huh? Yep. <laughs> whoa. Hey, whoa, there's my, my cohort here behind the curtain. <laughs> Cheryl, Tara, I found out that I have to go gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, and I'm all right with everything except no sugar. <laughs> oh, I would just die. I'll, I, I'll tell you, I've never gotten over the cravings. They say, go all this. Now, I have heard people who just eat strictly meat. They say that the cravings go away. I can't even imagine. But I'll be honest, I should be off of sugar, but I still eat a little bit here and there. Like, I'll have jelly or, well, I eat sugar-free pancake stuff. But I don't, I, I have no, I have no, nothing to tell you. I need to figure out some way to get off of it too myself because it's just hard. Any tips for storing potatoes? Um, well, you can store them in the refrigerator, cool, dry place is what they say. But yeah, but sometimes the starch it affects the starch when you put them in the refrigerator. Oh, does it? Yeah. Okay. So I keep them in a, just a basket in a closet where they don't let light get to them because that's what helps makes them turn green faster and everything. So Montana girl says Mike looks like the scene of the Wizard of Oz. It is. <laughs> we were joking around that he's the man behind the curtain. Behind the curtain. Because <laughs> he's sitting here. I don't know if you guys, you guys can't see it, but there's curtains all surrounding <laughs> him over there on the other side, so we can't see him. <laughs> Jill, thanks for taking Actually, the sorry. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's also a curtain over here, too. <laughs> yeah. He's, got, he's surrounded by curtains. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, I, I know how hot it was in Texas. and So, do you, so Ruth, appreciate you thinking of Yeah. <laughs> Montana girls, I'm using one of those fans right now. Oh, Very so do you, she I got guess, it at Ace. Oh, you got yours at Ace? Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought it even has these little hook-like legs and stuff, so I thought that was pretty yeah. clever. Um, Mike, you can send me the next one. Sue, I thought Jill just recently bought a house. Don't get me started. I did. She I did. bought one when we first moved. But I've decided we're moving because it's cheaper and easier to just move than to finish the kitchen. So if anyone wants a so house without moving? a kitchen then let me know. <laughs> uh, okay. Send me the next ones, dear. Yeah. I mean, our kitchen remodel is getting on my nerves now. <laughs> um, I did really good the first two months, but now I think it's just because we can't find anything. I'm having a hard time, even though I have all these kitchen gadgets, 
I can't find things like my mixer or stuff like that or the crock pot. I don't know where the crock pot, who knows? I think the crock pot was eaten by something because I have looked all over for the stupid crock pot and I can't find it anywhere. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the crock pot went, but I think I'm just getting tired of, of um, not being able to find stuff. I think it just, the chaos is getting to me, not being able to find stuff. <laughs> and so I'm like, you know, that that's my part of, and making decisions. Mm -hmm. it's like decision after this and it's stupid little decisions like is this shelf 12 inches or is this shelf 10 inches and so then you have to think through it well is this door going to hit the shelf if I put it here or is this cabinet door going to hit the shelf if I put it here and then like the microwave shelf we had a 69 I had a 69 dollar fix but it ended up costing us probably close to two thousand dollars by the time we were done with this dumb microwave shelf that's not even going to hold the microwave now Okay, so we put the microwave on the countertop. Guess what we discovered this weekend? There's nowhere to plug it in. <laughs> yeah, so guess what Mike spent all Sunday doing? Because he had to do it Sunday because they were putting in the countertops on Monday, hopefully. Trying to add another plug to the wall, which ended up being like a four-hour process. So it's stuff like that that's driving me nuts. Sheila says we're darling. <laughs> Um, Barbara, uh, forgive my question. Is it yourself that replies to my emails or you're living on a dime or an assistant? So I have an assistant that replies to some emails and then other emails she passes to me and I reply. So it's kind of both. And we need to actually tell her to start signing her name. I need to have her do that because, um, so people can know if it's her or us. Usually if it's the way you would know is if it's an order problem, mm -hmm. usually she takes care of it. If it's a question or a comment or something, then she sends it to me. But mm -hmm. she mostly just deals with the order things. So and, I write Tara on the email when I send it. Yeah. And if you need to ask me a question, go on the website into any post and well, make a I comment. Well, I send you the emails when you get them. Yeah, or Tara yeah. too. But if you want to go directly to me, you can go on the website and just make a comment on any um, post. And I Well, no. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Oh, no, sorry. don't do that. Yeah, just send well, mom an email. That's what I get mostly is questions not about the posts. Yeah, and it's it's messing us well, up. Well, I'm not doing that. They that's just the way they do it. I know they're doing it. But that's what we're saying. Is don't don't go to the website and ask mom questions. Just email her. What's happening is people are asking mom off topic questions on our website posts, and it gets this great big long comment, and then Google thinks that post is about that question and not what our post is actually about. So we're having to go in and delete a whole bunch of stuff because it's messing up our our google stuff so anyway mm -hmm. just email editor at living on a dime and janelle is my assistant she will send it to me or mom or she will send it to me and then i'll send it to mom yeah. if if uh i think she has i don't know if she, yeah i think she has your email yeah she sends it to anthony me. sick wife and house in disrepair oh anthony sick wife and house in disrepair as well as my health needs as the only one working right now. Please pay for us. Yes, mm -hmm. I am very sorry. That's it can be hard, so but here's where you have to do is simplify everything that you can. And here's the thing. Okay, so maybe you can't make all your meals from homemade stuff, but it's better for you to get TV dinners and eat TV dinners out of the freezer or easy things than to go out to eat. It's easier to buy paper plates and eat off of paper plates instead of doing a ton of dishes. And so keep things as simple as possible when you're in that situation. And then you won't get quite so overwhelmed. It's all hard. The time. It really is hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. UCF mom. Is it best to store baking powder and baking soda in the fridge, freezer, or regular pantry? So you can freeze it. And I, refrigerator, but I just store. I in the keep pantry. most of that stuff in the pantry because yeah. you can get condensation if yeah, it's in a cardboard true. box, uh, yeah. and so I don't. And like some um, sugars, if you have if the sugar comes in mm -hmm. a paper thing and you put mm -hmm. it in the freezer, it doesn't really need to be froze mm -hmm. for any reason, but it can get condensation. Sugar is a preservative, so it'll last forever. Yeah. Tanya, if you're a believer in Christ, you will go no matter when the rapture happens. Be prepared in your heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pamela, I guess I missed it. Why is Jill possibly going to me? Oh, yeah, it was a whole. 
So her, she's never bonded with her house and or do well, you wanna... I had a little bit of problem with one of my neighbors and so I'm just waiting to see if it settles down or not. So um, so I didn't know. And then on top of that, there was a house going up for sale close to Tars, you know, so we thought it might be more convenient for me to be closer to like come over when it's snowing to do the live streams and stuff. So we were just tossing it around a little bit, but I'm not sure I'm going to do it at this point. So um, crazy crisis. Crystal. Oh, okay. Crystal. I didn't realize that was your new name. She would love and appreciate all the prayers through her cancer journey. Yes. Mm. We will do that for you. Deb, please pray for her brother, Kurt. His kidney will start working. He's battling cancer and having problems with his kidneys. Wow. Oh, wow. UCF mom, which is better? To, oh, wait. That got in there twice. Okay. Kendra, thank you so much. I bought your first book and love it. Thank you. Dining mm. on a dime, 25% off right now, living on a dime.com. I am a family of six with two, with two dogs and was able to get my grocery budget from $900 a month to $400 a month. Oh, my goodness. For six people and two dogs. That's good. That is really good. That's Girlfriend, good. Girlfriend, oh, you got wow. it. 99 Zane says, when you are feeling like a treat, make hot chocolate with evaporated milk. It makes it taste good. That would be really good. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's good. We have a hot fudge recipe, I think, in the book that uses the evaporated milk. With yeah. The Send me the nice batch, Mike. Wendy, I wish I'd found you guys before I spent money on five-gallon buckets. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. But, you know, live and learn. Like, you know, I was thinking, we've probably spent... At, we've spent no less than five, but probably $10,000 on mistakes for this kitchen remodel. And just literally standing there with the contractors trying to figure out what to do with stuff. And sometimes, like the microwave cabinet, should have been a $69 fix, but it cost us probably $2,000, $1,500, $2,000. I don't know, somewhere around there. And the thing is, you got to just let it go when those things happen. You learn from your mistakes and you tried the best that you could. Don't beat yourself up over it and just move on to the next one. You know, I bought two houses that I lost money on like 20, I think what was the total? It was like $35,000 or $40,000 on two houses. And we didn't have the money to be losing on that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what? But I couldn't dwell on it. We had to move at those times for family reasons and job reasons. And so um, you just kind of move on. Well, later we made $300,000 on our house in Colorado. So, yeah, God gave us 10 times the amount because I didn't sit there and stew and worry over it and condemn myself for something that I tried the best that I could. And I didn't worry about the same thing with this kitchen remodel. We have gone way over budget now, but we're doing the best that we can. We have saved where we can. And I'm just going to pray that Mike's brilliant idea goes viral It'll pay and I get $400,000 back from it. So, so we're going to go, we're just going to stick with that. And just hope that's what happens. Um, let's see. Jennifer, butter in the cooler with ice does well from Kansas to Wyoming. Mom always made sure plenty of butter was taken to my brothers at Thanksgiving. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. So get Mike to make an Aldi rent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that when they... We're talking, I don't know if they're going to go now. They were talking about going and now we're not so sure, but I didn't even think about him going to Aldi for me. Guys, you may only be taking two pairs you. of underwear. No, unfortunately. Um, Joanne says, I'm right behind you, Jill. Keep eating the chocolate. It helps us. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I Shannon. don't know if I could ever give up chocolate. Do you think I could? Um, that's called an idol mother. You do realize it's in the Ten Commandments, and it's in the, in the top ten. That is a top ten mother. Mm. You do have to realize if Jesus asked you to give up chocolate. Mm. Uh, oh. Oh. Mike goes, oh, we got the mother-in-law on that one. Oh, they, that, they're witnesses of how you treat me, how you guys treat me. See? See? Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> um, is our kitchen a write-off? So yeah, actually our kitchen will, if I get going on the kit in the cooking videos, we will be able to write off a lot of the kitchen. Um, but you still have to spend the money anyway. I mean, yeah, we get to take it off on our taxes later, but, um, you know, you have to, you have to weigh, is it worth doing at the moment? Um, all of that. So anyway, okay. Did you send me the last ones, Mike? Uh, I did not. Okay. Let me see. Oh, here it came in. Sorry. What is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's weird. Susie, how long is ham good for? It's been in the refrigerator since Thanksgiving. Oh, mm. well, okay. So if it's vacuum sealed, look at the date on it, but I would not use it past the best buy date more than about if it's vacuum sealed, maybe five to seven days. Yeah. But look at the date on it. And if it's more than five to seven days past that date, I probably meat. You don't want to mess around. Not with meat. meat. Yeah. Meat. Will, you can use it past the sell by date. So sell by means the store has to sell it by that date. Best by means the flavor. And you have three to five days after that for meat. But I wouldn't go. Not for not for not mm -hmm. for not for regular mm -hmm. ham. Uh, Pam says before I started listening to you both, I threw all kinds of food away that had mm -hmm. just expired. I'm sorry, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Connie. My husband is such a stickler for dates. Just the thought of using food after the expiration date unnerves him completely. Why? There is nothing wrong with it. Tell him to get over it. <laughs> Tell him to all right, get it together. You know, people don't realize mm. we didn't have dates up until what night. 1990s or early, late 1980s or yeah, something. Yeah, 80s, I think. Yeah, we didn't even have dates, so mm -hmm. it's just something that I think the manufacturers love having that on there because, well, yeah, like your husband, like your husband, people it's throw fear it away. Tactic. Yeah, it's just it is. a fear tactic. It is totally fear tactics. Uh, Laureen says maybe one of my kids heisted the crockpot. <laughs> well, I would say yes, except that they haven't been here since uh, New Year's after the after the remodel started i know we're gonna find it we just found screws that we've been looking for for a month <laughs> for one of the pieces of the remodel and they found it today so courtney says i like using stuffing mixes i found for a quarter after christmas in Ooh, yeah yes That's that is good. a great idea good yep. idea donna spices how long after the expiration date years i oh. have spices that are 10 years expired and they're still just fine they were mm -hmm. vacuum sealed and they're just fine um Sue says she's been wanting to make meatloaf with stovetop stuffing in it. Yeah, that would be really good. Mm -hmm. Just Vicky, have a piece of dark chocolate. Good benefits. Mom <laughs> hates dark chocolate. Oh, yeah. I don't hate it. I it's I like milk chocolate best. Yeah. I eat any chocolate. I really do. Yeah. But um, Barbara says Sherwin Williams paint any good? I would not recommend it. I got cabinet paint. I got specialty cabinet paint for one hundred and ten dollars a gallon, thinking it would be something whippy, and it's not. So I, I wouldn't go with Sherwin Williams, but Denise loves your show kitchen. Oh, uh, thank you. She loves our show kitchen. Oh. Um, <laughs> Barbara, she loves, Barbara loves Mike's ensemble. That was very funny. <laughs> it's green and blue ensemble. Okay, dear, do the whole runway talk. Let's, let's, let's see your ensemble and model your runway talk here. Do your runway walk or whatever. My runway want. talk? What do you mean? I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you're your ensemble. <laughs> I love the blue and the, um, I, I don't know all the details. <laughs> I put you expert. on the spot. I, I'm just the model. I'm just here to look good. <laughs> you're just there to look good. Julie, um... Major cheeseburger soup in volume two. Yes, very mm -hmm. yummy. 25% off right now. That is a super yummy one. Wendy cooking up hamburger to freeze in small packages. Good job. Uh, yeah. You go for it. Elizabeth, I'm sorry, Jill. It seems like you guys really have some crazy neighbors. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's like neighbors have just been the bane of our existence almost. I don't know. I'm trying to be um, patient. I was trying to be patient in Colorado, but wow, I just about had it. Thankfully here we have really good neighbors and they're not super close. So, so we're a little concerned. There's a house going for sale that joins our backyard. So I'm a little concerned. I hope they don't have a big dog that they bring in. <laughs> but I have my dog, no barker thingies. Their dogs will regret if 
<laughs> we have them. Diane, I'm Cookbooks Guys, 25% off our volume one and volume two and our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. And our 400-page, 366-day planner. It's undated, so you can start now. That's the beauty of our planner. You don't lose any dates. You can start right now, and it will not matter. Debbie says, didn't I have crazy neighbors in Colorado? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had really crazy neighbors in Colorado. Like, they were threatening to kill us and burn down our house. Crazy. I'm not exaggerating. They were literally on my front porch, and thankfully, my other neighbor, who was armed, and um, came over to help me deal with them, and my oldest son was there also, but man alive, they are nut jobs. Anyway, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we are not there anymore. The Lord has provided us a, let's see, refuge mm -hmm. in our time that we need. Yeah, we actually have, if you go back and look on some of our videos, um, I think it's called death threats is why we moved or something like that. If you just type in death or maybe death threats, I think is in the title or why we moved, I can't remember. The real reason why we are moving, I think is what it's called. Um, so Grandma So Happy says, a few months ago, I bought Sherwin-Williams paint for my kitchen cabinets and have not used it yet. Spent so much now, now not hearing it's good. Yeah, I'm really not impressed at all. Not impressed at all. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe I just have too high expectations. But I will tell you, the bare paint... I accidentally left some in a container and it dried out a little bit. And then it wasn't just glopping drips all over the place. Mm, and so it thickened yeah. up. It was runny paint. I've never used paint that runny before. Yeah. So Barbara says, Jill, I found one of the reasons for creases and earlobes, degeneration of the elastic tissue that are around the small <laughs> blood vessels that send blood to the earlobes. Well, there you go. <laughs> that sounds even worse than just a wrinkle in the ear. Now I'm dying from something. So now you don't have like wrinkles. You have degeneration of the elastic, to elastic totally tissue around the small blood vessels that send blood to the earlobes. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Barbara. <laughs> oh, no. It just went from bad to totally terrible worse <laughs> and if i've got it in my toes too it's really bad it's coming from both ends uh, <laughs> oh brother all right i gotta uh, go to home depot and get parts for our kitchen remodel oh, so they can goodness. finish my countertops visit us at livingonadying.com bye we bye guys we love you he says stimulate your earlobes i will try your mom will stimulate, stimulate my ear <laughs> bye bye guys <laughs> Oh, goodness.